Cry havoc, let loose the dogs of war. The inspiration for this painting comes from a documentary I saw when I was in college. Uh, it's centered around Thomas Gold, a scientist. Now, Thomas Gold was a unique personality. He was famous for three things. His first was he had this theory that the human ear worked by microscopic hairs that would vibrate. Now, a lot of biologists disagreed with him, they argued with him, and eventually, of course, that was found out to be true. The second thing was he was famous for hiring Carl Sagan and giving Carl Sagan tenure when no one would. Thirdly, he had this theory about oil, petroleum, being a natural substance like nickel or copper, and being abundant in our world. So this is my first major painting that I did back, uh, probably started in 2010, 2011. It took me a year to complete. So the thing that really got me painting and doing this kind of subject matter was the fact that I was discussing this theory of a biogenic oil uh, with this engineer that I knew and he said no everybody knows that oil comes from uh, fossil fuels from dead dinosaurs dead plants and I believe that isn't true and most of the science actually ba uh, backs up the idea that it, you know it's an abundant natural resource so you know you start getting an inkling of what this painting is about you know okay I'm starting to get it now Saturn is in the background and one of its moon Titan uh, NASA discovered that there was hydrocarbons and there's never been life there and that's one of the major you know uh, building blocks of the theory that it come that it's a fossil fuel is you, it comes from life I kind of set it in Monument Valley because I like the grandeur of it and that idea of you know the wasteland nothing living in it uh, the car sticking out the ground actually come from a place uh, in southern United States Cadillac Ranch where this person has planted Cadillacs coming halfway through the ground. And I thought it was a really great idea because this is where most of the petroleum goes towards uh, fueling automobiles. And nothing is more representational of uh, you know, gas guzzlers and big Cadillacs. Now the Russians also had this theory back in the 1940s. They're in the corner here. Uh, when communism fell in 1990, they started digging these deep oil wells at 10,000 feet and offered this data to the Americans because they started hitting oil. And people say, Bill, big deal. About five years ago, let's say around uh, 2010, they started, uh, they actually became the largest oil producer in the world based on this kind of theory that it was plentiful rather than this hit and miss idea that, you know, you got to be lucky to strike it. You just really need to know the geological formations where it's easy to get at the oil. So, the man attacking the dinosaur is Thomas Gold. Uh, he's attacking him with an oil bit at the end of an exhaust pipe that's all bent. When I first heard about Thomas Gold was in the 80s when I was in school in a documentary. And his theory was if he hit oil in the steppes of Russia at 10,000 feet, it would be basic proof that oil isn't seeping down because there's too much pressure coming up. And his theory was most of the oil that's on our planet seeps up from the mantle. And it's actually been proven since because a few oil companies have dug deep oil wells where reserves, the uh, deposit of oil has been depleted. But what that oil, why that oil is there is because it's seeped up from the mantle. And so you do have companies that are actually going back to these old oil wells and digging these deep uh, drill, uh, drilling deep at 10,000 feet and discovering oil. Uh, they're speeding up the process by fracking, which is kind of nasty, but again, the concept is still there. It's a plentiful, abundant substance. So uh, when Thomas Gold was actually sponsored by some oil companies, and when he hit oil at 10,000 feet, they pulled their funding because there wasn't supposed to be fund or there wasn't supposed to be oil at this fracture where he drilled. The little green army men are representational of the idea that you know this is how we kind of. This is how the Americans keep their monopoly on oil by using their military, you know, to strong arm. 
And since the fall of communism, they've had free reign at this. Behind the army men, you see the two major interests that rely on oil. Uh, capitalism, a businessman in a suit riding a horse, and the Arab businessmen that kind of have had this monopoly, monopoly on oil for so many years. Uh, this has been changing lately because uh, over the last 40 years, we've been told that we're running, about oil, running out of oil and the theory of peak oil, where we're going to hit a peak oil and we're going to run out. Now, this was supposed to happen in the 70s, believe it or not, but they keep extending it because what happens is they keep finding more and more oil. They, they do have these major oil discoveries and you know it's 10% of the future producing of oil, but when they start producing, it goes down to 0.1% because when they... The reality of it is when they find this major oil, it's really a lot. And if you flood the market, which is kind of happening now, uh, the price goes really low. And it is monopoly. You know, there are things that I find interesting. A lot of, you know, uh, people like me find interesting. Uh, these ideas that the world isn't the way we're being presented every day in the media and the ideas. More kind of... Uh, why is this seem to be the opposite of what they're telling us? Uh, uh.